Good morning, everyone. Um, after we've heard a lot about the engineering side of um, understanding road and street scenes yesterday, uh, we also have touched a little bit with Mapillary on um, a lot of the data set pipeline. And I want to take that a step further and talk about um, how to label uh, supervised data sets and um, base it on our experience as a data services provider and our observations we had and have uh, looking at these semantic segmentation tasks. Um, I, uh, I use the next 15 minutes or 15 to 20 minutes to talk about um, challenges we see um, in regards of efficiency, but I'll then come to something um, which is um, close to my and um, my people's heart um, is the guidelines and definitions. And then I'm, I want to kind of talk a little bit about standardization and um, what we could change um, for the future. Why am I talking about this? Um, it's basically our daily business. We are a data services company. Um, we're mainly focusing on um, creating um, and annotating machine learning data sets. Um, computer vision and um, the national language processing um, are two main areas which we're working at. Um, that also means that my and my colleagues' business is kind of revising guidelines, um, revising um, taxonomies together with our clients before we actually implement them with our teams. Um, we have 800 employees and we are covering a variety of different um, annotation jobs um, for um, more traditionally the augmented reality space, but um, nowadays a lot in the um, self-driving car space as well. And we enjoy kind of to um, challenge our clients and guidelines of our clients in order to get more out of their data. Now, by now it's not a secret anymore that a lot of companies in this world are working um, on self-driving or semi-self-driving cars, and most of them want to understand what an, a specific road um, scene uh, includes. And without going too much into the technical details um, that was covered yesterday on how to actually do it, um, semantic segmentation at the end of the day means I'm um, telling about an image, what do I see, what regions um, are there, and I'm trying to apply a predefined um, class towards each um, region. Um, you see a, a kind of uh, annotation interface here, um, which we are exploring, um, playing around with, and, and basically delivering um, some of our work with. Um, at the end of the day, it's important for most of our clients that um, they get high-level accuracy and precision on these tasks and um, they use it at the end of the day as training data sets um, for their um, supervised um, training data needs. Now, if we're talking about semantic segmentation in particular, there are a number of challenges. And um, if any one of you have um, experienced or has experienced um, doing such a manual labeling task, this actually takes quite a while. Just to throw one number out there, it, it depends um, obviously on all of these factors, but um, an hour an image um, can easily be. Um, and, and that's a challenge if you think about um, current data uh, sets and, and how big they are and the needs for um, labeled data. And um, I basically came up with these four main cat uh, categories based on our observations and experience what we see currently as um, contributors um, holding us off um, from efficiency and, and kind of um, high throughput in the space. Um, we have these four pieces here, which is one tool functionality um, that goes directly towards the annotation tool. Are you having something completely manual or are you having it um, semi-automated? Um, scene complexity, one can argue that a uh, uh, scene in Amsterdam, in Amsterdam on a Saturday afternoon on a, um, 
is a lot more complex or it's likely to be more time consuming to annotate than a rural street um, um, at night. Another piece is quality expectations. Quality is a highly uh, discussed piece. Um, it's often not 100% defined. The question becomes, do you wanna, what quality do you actually need right now in order to train um, your algorithm and get the right results? Um, and lastly, and that's what I actually wanna talk about today, is kind of how good are your definitions and how clear are your um, definitions and guidelines towards this task? Um, I would argue that there are two main impacts this last point has. One is obviously the time taken and kind of again, um, optimizing these definitions and guidelines means um, at the end of the day, less time spent and thereby higher throughput of uh, images, um, but also uh, has a clear result in quality of the uh, data set and, and usability at the end of the day of the data set. Uh, if the definitions and guidelines are not ambiguous, um, you have less rework cycles and, and less um, kind of false positive within, uh, positives within your data set. So um, that's why this is an important piece in my opinion. Um, all of the others um, could kind of fill talks as well, but um, let me jump into some of our findings um, when we look at um, um, guidelines in general. I kind of divided it into two pieces. Um, one is, um, I'm arguing basically that classes often use very abstract concepts and um, the taxonomies used are commonly pretty flat. Um, what does this mean? If we look at um, this image as an example and, we wanted, um, and we're looking at a typical taxonomy, um, we're seeing something like vegetation as a class to describe basically everything which is um, having some plants um, on, on the surface, basically. Now, while I understand why we're doing, or while, while I get the concept, and it's a, a very generalized idea of um, this area in the picture, if you're looking at it from a human perspective, is that actually what you would describe this area as? And um, I asked myself and I asked uh, or a bunch of our, uh, my coworkers, um, how would you describe the red area? And you would, or at least I wouldn't necessarily use such a generalized concept in order to describe something like this um, to fellow colleagues. I would have gone way more in detail um, and would have kind of used grass, um, some of my colleagues uh, used nature, um, slope, there could be a variety of things, and, and that's basically what I'm trying to outline here. While I understand that there is, we can't have uh, 500, or the, the, it might be too difficult to have 500 different classes to annotate an object, um, is there a more intuitive approach um, to, uh, to kind of create these taxonomies? And um, I think there is, and there can be, um, we may have to be a little creative on how to do it. One, one could be, before you enter such an annotation task, um, take a survey and, and at least agree on, on the bigger one, but the, uh, on, the, on the most or most common one, right? Um, and if you have two common ones, then you can already see that there might be some ambiguity on, on kind of perception of, um, of the annotator at the end of the day. The second piece here is, and that's the flat, hierarchy, uh, or the flat hierarchy piece on the taxonomy. If we create taxonomies more hierarchical, um, we can actually use the generalized concept, which is a vegetation, but then kind of break that up into grass or um, whatever else the surrounding is. And that gives um, your algorithm also, um, at the end of the day, more information to work with and later also to um, take decisions on. Because at the end of the day, grass may be different to your car um, than um, agricultural land uh, on a rural um, base. While on grass you can easier drive and kind of use it as a kind of escape route. If there's an obstacle in front of you, uh, other, um, other vegetation is maybe less likely. So that's my first part. The second part is, and I try to show that as uh, best as possible, is this current example. I'm 
explaining this with bounding boxes, but could be also kind of um, uh, pixel level segmentation. We have two different classes here, and, and we're seeing within development cycles, uh, um, taxonomies change um, quite a bit. So we see uh, th there's a likelihood that taxonomies uh, conflict at some point. What I mean with that is, um, in the first round, people decided um, the bicyclist is the important piece, and that's actually the intent, or th they had some intent to capture that. Uh, the second round, um, we um, needed to tag only the bicycle. Now, from a human perspective, that means change and efforts and likelihood to um, introduce more um, or to, to introduce bias and also to introduce um, just errors um, because you are still used to the old data set now or to the old classes, now you're changing the new ones. So there's an effort going into that from um, this perspective. Conflicting taxonomies also don't necessarily only need to be, or I don't, by, by conflicting taxonomy, I'm not only focusing within one uh, particular company. If we're looking at openly available data sets um, for the lack of a better uh, presentable uh, solution, we have, for example, the Dino data set and um, the Mapillary data set, which we have been talking about yesterday. Those are actually pretty well done because um, Mapillary um, used um, the Dino data set as a base, so the conflicts are very few there. But um, I could see situations if um, different people are working um, on different taxonomies internally that, uh, that they are slightly different and may not be able to talk with each other. And that brings me to my um, last piece, which is within a traffic situation, every human gives up some piece of personal um, perception of how um, they would interact within a road. They, they are following standardized rules, and they're following. There, there was a period of time where we agreed as humans to um, to follow a common standard within um, traffic. And I would argue it is time, at least, for um, um, us to start this discussion. Could there be a standardized taxonomy for these um, roads? And that may, or these road scenes. Um, that may be growing organically, as in this example, you, you kind of figure out we need to have something in order to avoid such incidents. And I think that also happens organically. If we look at um, more people opening up their data sets, more people talking about it. Um, Mapillary is one example from yesterday. Um, they're pretty open on what, what kind of classes they used. Um, but maybe also kind of enforced by some uh, local authorities um, at the end. I think taking away the challenge to kind of from a particular company to define their own taxonomy um, will enable us to optimize on other um, problems um, which I outlined, right? There are still the tool issues and we can still optimize for what kind of um, imagery do we actually want to have annotated. With kind of the standardization of taxonomy and definition and classes, we are able um, to focus on harder problems and I think there are still enough out there. What I'm, oops, what I'm also thinking about is if we are slowly going towards um, a discussion around how do these cars talk with each other, it definitely won't hurt to think about a common standard on, on how to perceive things and how to at least name things within a road, um, which should um, make this discussion of kind of um, self-driving cars talking to each other in the future a lot um, easier. This is um, what I was talk uh, wanting to talk about. I know that a lot of people here are working on, um, on the, more on the engineering side, and I would love to hear your questions or um, discuss with you um, whatever your observations are in this space. Thank you. <laughs>